Hey, my name is Raymond. Hope you are all doing well. And today we are talking about stocks. But more specifically, we're going to be talking about dividend stocks. I'm going to be talking about the five best dividend stocks that you can invest in today and just continue investing for the rest of your life because all of these stocks are going to give you a consistent stream of dividends and also grow over time as well. One of the reasons why I like dividend stocks so much is because they are the one true form of passive income. All you have to do is buy the stock and then pretty much go to sleep and you're gonna get consistent payments throughout the year. I do have a few set of criteria that I do look at when I'm deciding whether or not to invest into a dividend stock. The first one is really around the dividend yield. So ideally it should have a dividend yield of at least 5%. And the dividends that they pay out should ideally be stable or growing over time as well. And finally, the last criteria that I'm looking at is whether or not the company has been able to grow over time as well. Whilst we are focusing on the dividends, it's also nice to see capital growth as well, as we don't want to fall into a dividend or a yield trap. So with all that being said, all of the stocks that I'm sharing with you today tick all of those three criteria that I'm looking for. And I'll also share with you a quick company overview and why I like these companies so much. But I just wanna preface that, you know, this video isn't going to be a video where I deep dive into the company financials. It's just gonna be a really simple to follow along video about why I like them so much. You know, if after this video, you do want to invest into these companies, please do further research as well. And make sure you stay till the end because the last stock might shock you a little bit. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first stock on the list is JB High Five. JB High Five brings together two of Australia's most well-known retail brands, that being JB High Five and The Good Guys. JB High Five focuses on selling consumer electronics, whilst The Good Guys focuses selling white goods. In addition to operating over 300 different storefronts across Australia and New Zealand, they also do offer IT consulting as well through their JB High Five Solutions Group. JB High Five have been consistently paying fully franked dividends all the way back since 2004. And they even paid it during the 2008 GFC crisis and also the most recent 2020 COVID recession as well. They currently have a dividend yield of 5.4%. And as we can see, they have been pretty consistently year after year grown or increased their dividend payments over the past 10 years. And at the same time, they have grown their share price as well quite well over the past 10 years. One thing to note about JB Hi-Fi is that they did recently announce that they will be reducing the dividend to $1.63, which is a 9.4% reduction from last year. It is generally not a good sign to see dividends being cut, but I don't see this happening much more in the future, if at all, given that JB High Five has the makings to be such a good dividend stock. They massively increased their dividends last year due to the huge spike that we saw in consumer spending due to COVID-19. By reducing the dividend, there'll be pressure taken off their balance sheet, which will enable the business to have more stable dividends moving forward. Overall, I really like JB High Five as a dividend paying stock. They've been able to consistently grow as a company over time, even though they pretty much pay out around 70% of their profits back to shareholders as dividends. You really do get a really nice balance between dividends and capital growth with JB hi Five. The next stop on the list is Rio Tinto. Now Rio Tinto is a metals and mining company operating in over 35 different countries. They are probably most commonly known as an iron ore miner, but they also have business operations across aluminium, copper, diamonds, energy, and various other minerals. Rio Tinto operates across the supply chain from the exploration phase to the mining phase, all the way through to the processing of minerals. Rio Tinto has paid biannual dividends all the way since 2011, and they've always been fully franked and currently have a dividend yield of roughly 9%. We can see that Rio Tinto's net dividend yield has really fluctuated over the past 10 years or so. However, on average, the dividend yield has remained around about 5 to 6%. It's important to note that in FY21, Rio Tinto did announce a special dividend payment to go on top of their usual dividend payments, which coincides with this spike that we see in the dividend yield. 
This special dividend totaled $2.51 per share and was due to the global spike that we saw in iron ore prices, which caused Rio Tinto to obviously profit a lot from that. I'd expect that the dividend yield will kind of come back down and normalize given that iron ore prices globally have kind of come back down and is relatively stable now. From a capital growth perspective, Rio Tinto has been able to consistently grow over the past five years, despite paying back over 60% of profits back to shareholders in the form of dividends. The share price was going through a little bit of a slump late last year due to the fall that we saw in iron ore prices, but they've since recovered quite well. In terms of the outlook for Rio Tinto, I do like where they are heading as a company as they are shifting their focus towards mining minerals and resources that will be used to power the energy transition that we're seeing worldwide. Rio is making strong pushes into the lithium market, investing over $1 billion in projects over the past year or so. I think that no one will disagree that globally we are seeing a bigger shift towards renewable energy resources and with these investments today, Rio Tinto are essentially future-proofing themselves. The next stop on the list is another mining company, and that is Fortescue Metals. Unlike Rio Tinto, Fortescue is a pure play iron ore company. They have an integrated mines to market structure that it exports over 180 million tons of iron ore annually. Their cost structure allows them to ride out difficult phases of the market and then produce above market returns during good economic times. Now the current dividend yield of Fortescue Metals is sitting at 18.5%, which is actually insane and probably around four to five times the average within Australia. And at the same time, the company has been able to return over 200% over the past five years from a capital growth perspective as well. So if you are chasing a high dividend yield company that isn't a dividend or value trap, then Fortescue definitely needs to be on your list. We can see that the dividend yield over the past five years, whilst it has had its ups and downs over the past five years overall, has increased their yield over time. And to understand why the yield can fluctuate so much with both Rio Tinto and Fortescue, we have to understand that iron ore itself is quite cyclical, meaning that the price will fluctuate over time based on a wide variety of global economic factors. We can see that the price of iron ore over the past 10 years or so has fluctuated quite a bit, and we can see that during the periods of when iron ore prices was trading low was when Fortescue paid out lower dividends. Which makes sense because the company would be expected to make less profit during those times and as a result has less to pay out to its investors. Now another reason why I like Fortescue so much as a company is because they have a subsidiary known as Fortescue Future Industries, which is a global green energy and product company. They specialize in producing green hydrogen, green ammonia, and green electricity to be used instead of fossil fuels. They are committed to producing zero emission green hydrogen from 100% renewable resources and are seeking to produce 15 million tons by 2030. Fortescue is definitely way ahead of its competitors when it comes to renewable resources. And if they are able to successfully execute this, then the share price could take a massive increase as there is no doubt that the world is shifting away from fossil fuels to renewable energy resources. Resources. The next stop on the list is ANZ. It's pretty easy to see why banks are such a favorite among dividend investors. And that's because the entire banking sector offers quite lucrative dividend yields. However, currently ANZ offers the highest dividend yields. ANZ has paid biannual dividends all the way since 1979, with most of their dividends being fully franked. They currently have a dividend yield of roughly 5%. And besides the reduction in dividends during the COVID recessionary period, the dividends have remained relatively stable over the past 10 years or so. It's also important to note that APRA actually released some guidelines in terms of how much liquidity the banks had to keep during the recessionary period. This essentially limited the amount of dividends that the banks could distribute to their investors, which explains the fall off last year in dividend payments. The good news is that APRA has begun easing these restrictions, so we should see dividend payments from all banks essentially go back to normal from here on out. From a capital perspective as well, ANZ has also been able to consistently grow over the past 10 years, despite paying biannual dividends all the way since 1979. And the last dividend stock on the list is VAS. Now you might be wondering, Raymond, this is just an ETF that invests into the top 300 ASX listed companies. 
how can this be a good dividend stock to you know buy and hold forever? Well, because VAS is an ETF, it essentially invests into all of the Australian large blue chip companies. And those are the ones that tend to distribute dividends, such as the big four banks, Telstra, and even a lot of the other companies that are mentioned on this list. The dividends that VAS distributes is dependent on the underlying stocks that VAS invests into. So there can be some variations year to year on the amount of dividends distributed. However, overall, the dividend yield has remained relatively stable with a small amount of growth over the past 10 years, with the exception of the 2020 recessionary period, which will give it a break. But the other reason why I like BAS so much as a dividend stock is because the capital growth of this ETF has been the best and most consistent out of all of the stocks that we've talked about so far. With an average annual growth rate of around about 9% per annum, it's provided investors with the best of both worlds, a consistent stream of dividends and also capital growth over time. So those are my top five dividend stocks to essentially buy and hold forever. Let me know down in the description below what your thoughts are on these companies. And if you learned something new, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.